Good afternoon, hope everybody's doing good. We're uh, gonna do a little deal on safety today. Go over some of the things we should and shouldn't do with this mess going on with the coronavirus. Some good things. As we spoke about the other day, the national death rate is only at 1.35%. It's gone up just a little bit from the other day. But it's actually down 0.05% from last night. While the world's death rate has maintained somewhere between 3 and 4% and bounces around. These figures depend on when people report things and how accurate they are and how quick they are and when we get them, exactly what they'll be. New Mexico hit 100 confirmed cases of the virus overnight. Um, so we're going up slowly. That's partly attributable to our spread out living arrangement by and large in New Mexico. The sparsity of people. That's a good thing. If you look at that contrasted to New York, they're all packed in there like a bunch of sardines. That's one reason theirs is so high. In fact, it's the highest in the nation. And also because of their mindset. They didn't believe it in the beginning about the social distancing, as they call it nowadays. Uh, that's very important in slowing this thing down. If someone doesn't have contact with somebody that's infected, they can't get it. It's pretty simple. The president put out his 15 days to slow the spread. And the instructions on the attitude follow him, listen to the directions of the state and local authorities. By and large, that's correct. I'll get to that in a bit. If you feel sick, stay at home. Don't go to work. Don't contact. Um, family members in person, that type of thing, but do contact your medical provider, your doctor. They can advise you what they think you ought to do based on your symptoms. If someone in your household is tested positive for coronavirus, keep the entire household at home and do not go anywhere. Unless advised to by your doctor, of course. If your children are sick, keep them at home. Don't let them be around people. The thing is this, if if I'm infected or I'm a carrier, I'm sick, whatever the case may be, and I give it to you or have contact with you, then I'm not only affecting you, but I'm affecting your mother, your father, your uncle, your grandparents, your children, whoever the case may be. And then whoever they have contact with. There's a certain percentage, there's a formula for it. I won't get into that on uh, multiplying out the number of people that you have contact with, the number of people they have contact with, and just goes on down the line. And it runs into big numbers. I made a real simple little mathematical equation. I only went for five days since the incubation period is considered to be 5.1 days. How they came up with that, I don't know, but because it varies. Um, but if, I, if I'm infected and I have contact with 10 people today, today is day one. To make it simple, I estimated it's a little lower than this, but half of those people would get sick. So on at the end of day one, there's myself, the five people that contracted the virus for me, that's six. Now tomorrow, or later in the day, depends if this is going tomorrow, I'll make it a lot easier. Um, there's six of us, and we have contact with 10 people each. Half of them, and six times 10 is 60, half of them is 30. Now there's 30, plus myself and the original five, so that's 36. You work this out over just five days, you're looking at 9,852 people that have been infected. And that's going to be about 
half of that actually because the uh, contracted rate of the virus is somewhere between 1.15 and 1.25. So if we say 1.2, it's going to be about half of that 5. Instead of 5, it would be about half. Instead of 1.5. So you can see how in just a matter of a few short weeks, millions of people will be infected with it. And that's why it's so important to take these steps about having social distance. It's the biggest help there is if we have to get out, which we do, we have to go to the store, we have to do this, we have to do that, and stay away from people. And then you have to consider touching things. The studies vary between just a few hours in the air versus a few short days on hard surfaces, particularly plastic and metal. Everything's plastic and metal. You open a door, uh, you open your car door, um, if you've picked up the virus because the grocery store door automatic wasn't working or the shopping cart, whatever the case may be, and then you open your car door, now it's on your car door. Now your husband or wife or whoever kid gets in the car, now they've got it. You don't have to cough in their face to get it. Uh, so we have to have constant washing of hands, cleaning surfaces as much as practical. You can use uh, the hand sanitizers, you can make your own with 70% isopropyl alcohol. You can put a little aloe vera with it to keep it from drying you out. Or you can just mix it with water. That's what most of it is on the market. Mix it with water. Um, Clorox spray, any kind of things of that nature will help you with that. Um, you sneeze or cough, you do it in the inside of your elbow to keep it from going out. Or a Kleenex or a handkerchief, something like that. that the face mask a lot of people have a wrong idea that it's going to protect them. It doesn't really do that because it doesn't seal around your nose and mouth. It doesn't shield your eyes. What it does do is help if I'm sick and I cough or sneeze or a little bit of spit comes out when I'm talking, uh, <clears throat> it contains that so I don't give it to you. That's where the importance is of that. Something that we'll run into if we don't adhere to these, and New York, as of this morning, um, is starting to slow the progression of this virus. And that's because of all the things they have in place. But look what they've had to do to slow it down. So if we start now with only 100 in the whole state, there's going to be more than that. And I guarantee you there's more right now. They just haven't been tested yet. They haven't felt sick. They don't feel sick for four or five days. Um, but if we start now, the importance of it can't be exaggerated. Something comes to mind for me on slowing down or stopping to make, really get it across to some people. I was working patrol one night and I noticed this... Uh, shiny BMW kind of roll through a stop sign controlled intersection. So I pulled him over for failure to stop. And as luck would have it, he was an attorney being driving a BMW. And he wanted to tell me that uh, it was okay, he slowed down. There was no cars. I said, well, it does make a difference. You're supposed to stop, you need to stop. And he just went on and on and on and just rant and rage and want to argue about it. And, uh, I asked him for his driver's license, registration, insurance. He just kept on him. He actually got a little abusive verbally and finally I had about enough. And I said, if I can prove to you that there's a difference between slowing down and stopping, would you just shut up and pay the ticket? And he says, yeah. I said, okay. Get out of your car. <laughs> so I had to get out of the car. I deployed my collapsible baton and I went to beat him on his legs. And I asked him, I said, do you want me to slow down the spot? <laughs> and uh, of course, I, <laughs> he came around to my way of thinking pretty quick. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's a funny way of getting to it, but it, it's, a, it's that important. There is a difference between stopping, slowing down, and not doing nothing. 
So we, we've got to do that. Um, some of the, the biggest symptom is a high fever. From what I have been able to find out, if you're up around 102, 103 in that neighborhood, uh, you need to be calling your doctor. That's, that's very high fever. Of course, if you have a cough, sore throat, runny nose, uh, that type of thing. And of course, in, in the more advanced stage of it, you're going to have uh, trouble with your breathing. Uh, and you certainly need to call your doctor. They don't want a bunch of people coming down here just because they think they're sick. Um, again, that eliminates some exposure to some people. Um, I was unable to get a hold of Walmart. I've tried all morning long, but I'm pretty sure they might have some special hours for older people to do their shopping. I don't know what they are. It might be on their website, but I know they have uh, pickup services. You can call in your order and or put it on the computer and they bring it out. I've talked to some people about that and they say they pick out better produce than they do because I thought went through my mind they were going to get rid of all their junk. It's the opposite from what I've been told. And that's a pretty handy thing. Smith's actually has that too, but it's through a third party. It's on their uh, website for the app. You get the app and um, they will even deliver it for a slight fee. Or you can pick it up, call them, and they'll bring it out to you. They both have pickup medication lanes so you can drive up and pick up your prescriptions. So we don't even have to go in. So that's a pretty handy thing. Um, any questions, anything you want to look up, feel free to call me. I'm enlisted in the church directory. Or you can look up on the website under cdc.gov slash coronavirus. And if you want to get into some of the statistical data, you can put another slash and put 2019 in COV. That's Nora Charles Ocean Victory. So cdc.gov slash coronavirus. I have a couple things I'd like to, to read in the Bible. One is one of my favorite verses for this type of situation. And it is Proverbs 3.21. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. That's what we're looking to do here. Keep ourselves safe and keep this from spreading and get it shut down. People can go back to work and get our, uh, our country back where it needs to be. Uh, for those that follow it a little bit, stock market's going back up all because of the trillions of dollars the federal government has agreed to send out. There's help coming. From what they said this morning, there'll be $1,200 per adult in the household and up to $500 per child. Now, there's some limitations on that type of thing, but they also have some other things added in for unemployment and for businesses and that type of thing. So our great country that God helped us design with our forefathers is coming back once again. The other verse I would like to read that governs this or speaks to this, and it goes along with us encouraging each other, calling someone. I challenged everybody the other day to call a couple people a day. I don't know if Kirk figured out how many that would be in a week's time. If I called... Uh, Two people every day for ten for five days, that'd be ten people. And each one of those called two people, that'd be another ten, be a hundred times a five. <laughs> ten times ten, ten times a hundred, that's a thousand. Our church would be covered in about a week. I just like this verse. It's Philemon, I think is what he said. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the saints. In other words, that we did our part of encouraging others. I really like that verse. It speaks to me. Hope everybody has a good day. I hope this helped everybody a little bit. A lot of it's redundant in some ways, but it's just good to refresh it. 
And we need everyone to keep safe. That's our goal for our church, for our community. And we can be the light of this area by leading the way. Thank you for your time.